Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of Coffee Before Arch and today we're going to be talking about arrays. Now in the last video we really talked about pointers and how they can be used to access memory. Uh, and we were kind of playing around with them and setting them to you know different variables and seeing how what happened if we updated one of them. Now as you as you kind of may have been thinking we don't really want to just work on single numbers right there's a lot of data out there in the world there's a lot of buzzwords like big data so it implies that we need you know something that we haven't seen before so certainly all these people working on big data aren't initializing a thousand different uh or ten thousand or a hundred thousand different you know uh variables so there must be a clean way of making one big variable, and that's what an array is. You can think of an array as a very big variable that stores a bunch of smaller variables. So in this case, we'll look at an integer array. This will be in the file uh, arrays.cpp. So let's look at this first line. So we have something new, but it looks similar to our regular de declaration statements. So we're saying int a bracket 10. And this is saying, I want you to give me the space for an integer type, but I want you to give me 10 of them. So normal declaration says tells the compiler, I want you to give me memory for something. This says, I want you to give me memory for 10 integers. Now, these integers, uh, the index of them. So if you were to want the first one, that will start at index zero, so it'll be the zeroth element, and then going all the way up to the ninth element, so zero through nine, or 10 total elements. So a natural way to do something like initialization is to use a for loop. So we'll cycle over from zero up to nine, uh, up to and including, I should say. So zero through nine, uh, so 10 total iterations, and then we'll just set the value of each of the ith index to be equal to whatever that index is. So in spot zero, we should have the value zero. In spot seven, we should have this value seven. Now, then we'll just print it out and we should just see that every single uh, array will, or every single element of the array will just be counting up, you know, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, but all from the same variable this a array. Now, if we know ahead of time what the value is, right? If we know ahead what the values that we're going to be putting in, we can also just do it in a single line. So in this case, we don't need to specify the size of the array because we get that implicitly from this initialization. So in this case, we're going to be declaring and initializing a uh, array called b with three elements that are 10, 11, and 12. So in this case, we'll print out again all three elements. Now, then we get to a little bit of pointer arithmetic. Right. So let's scroll down, and we're gonna be looking right over here at pointer arithmetic. Now, what do we mean by that? So as we said before, pointers point to memory location. And you can think of these arrays as a big contiguous chunk of memory. So when we say give me uh, an array of size 10, you know, they don't just throw each of those integers, those 10 integers in a random spot in memory. It's put in a contiguous chunk of memory that are what we call a contiguous chunk, which is a line that is, you know, element zero through nine all together in an order in a row. So for this example, we'll see that we can actually point to these specific memory locations. So if we do an integer pointer and we set it equal to b, b itself, right? so this here, this array, b points to the first element of the array. Now we can index using, say, b of zero but that's really equivalent to just dereferencing the first element of the array, so, or dereferencing the address of the first element. Then we do this thing, so some pointer arithmetic here. So then we increment pointer. 
Now, if we remember from last time when we had these nasty memory addresses, you know, it may not make sense. We're adding one to that nasty memory address. Ah, uh, especially because we know that integers are four bytes. So, you know, if we want the next one and we said it was contiguous in memory, wouldn't we want to go four bytes further? Well, pointer knows what type it is. So the compiler knows what type that this PTR variable is. It knows that, that it's an integer pointer. So when you increment pointer, in this case, it knows that it's a pointer. So it will go ahead and automatically update and move over the uh, four spaces in memory. So a couple last things. So character arrays. So we want strings, right? So we want to sometimes print out text. And we can do that in a couple of ways. So the way that we've kind of learned before is, uh, or one of the ways is with this array, right? So we have a character array. Uh, the way that strings look in memory is that it's really just an array of a bunch of characters in a row. So in this case, we'll just do hello world again. And because we know that string, well, we'll go ahead and just automatically initialize it at the same time as we declare it. However, in C, when you when you do uh, when you don't do an array, when you do this string type thing, so you can also just do a pointer. So a char pointer set it equal to hello world. But in C and especially C, uh, you have to do a constant char pointer, which says that I have a pointer to a string. However, that string itself is constant. It's in read-only memory, meaning we're not allowed to touch any of these characters or, you know, even though we can maybe point to them, we can't actually change the value or we'll get our, an error. Now up here in this array, because it's not this kind of string format that we have right here, we can change any of these letters if we want to. But regardless, as far as just printing out, we'll show that they're both equivalent. So let's go ahead and get to printing. So as always, we'll compile our arrays.cpp. So g++ dash o arrays, we'll pass in arrays.cpp. Did a good job this time. We didn't get any compile errors. And there's our green executable. And then we'll start working. So as we see, we're printing out that length 10 array A. And so we see that we get exactly what we expected. For every index, we get the same value, exactly what we initialized it to. Now we talked about contiguous chunks of memory. So let's look down here. And we see that we have this constant increment by four, right? So if you're familiar with your hex, zero plus four is four, four plus eight is, uh, four plus eight is 12, which in hex is C, uh, C plus four, uh, or 12 plus four is 16, which is equal to uh, you know one over. So we end up incrementing over here, right? So this turns into a seven and it continues down, right? Now, why are we incrementing by four each time? So that's because remember these things are sized. So this is the size of an integer because it's the size of an integer the next element will only start four bytes after the previous element. So from this big long string 4860, the first, so the zeroth element will be at 4860, the first element will be 4864, the second element will be at 4868, and so on and so forth. Then we see we can do the same thing with, uh, with automatic initialization. So we don't have to have an initialization loop. We can do it declaration initialization at the same time. And then we see that for the case of calling B of zero instead with a pointer, dereferencing a pointer or incrementing the pointer, so showing off that pointer arithmetic and then dereferencing it, we can still kind of traverse an array. And then we see that these two strings, even though we already show that one of them, the array type, was mutable, or that rather that we could change it. Uh, and then the other type, which is the more C-like string that we do a 
character pointer, we see that we can use both uh, in times where we just need to print. It's just that the C type string one uh, is read only, so we can't change that string. But in a lot of cases, we don't really care about changing strings. All right, so that's going to do it for our brief introduction to arrays. As always, if we go to our GitHub page, and let's see how fast that it loads today. Looks like it's going a little slow, but we'll get there. I need to remember not to close it out. Here we go. So at the Coffee Before Arch GitHub page, um, if we go to the C++ course, so C++ Crash Course, here we'll have lists of all the videos that we have on the YouTube channel, or links to them, concepts covered in them, and then the associated files. And if we go to today, Arrays and Pointers, we have our example of the day of Arrays and Pointers. So feel free to download this code play around with it, do whatever you want with it, uh, right? This is a learning tool. Uh, like I said, I'm Nick from Coffee Before Arch, and I hope you have a nice day.